Hello everyone and welcome back to Brooksburg Zoo. Today we are going to finish many things, actually. We are going to finish our Oceania house with the last big habitat in there and this also means that we are going to finish the Paradise Beyond area because the Oceania house is the last project on our list in this area and after that yeah we are finished with that and we can continue with Brooksburg Castle so um, little spoiler for the next episode and next episode you finally going to see the creation of the habitat for the white rhinos in Brooksburg Castle our pachyderm house so first of all let's have a look at our wombats at our platypus and then let's get started to build the new habitat with a walkthrough habitat inside an actual walkthrough no a walkthrough uh, what is it called a walkthrough exhibit a walkthrough exhibit within a walkthrough habitat within a building well <laughs> that's lots of stuff and that's what you're going to see in today's episode but before we get started you know what time it is yeah it's the perfect time to hit the like button already for this video subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any further episodes on Brooksburg Zoo and all the other stuff that I have going on on my channel and yeah here we are first of all I created the wall around the building so to close the whole building you can actually see how big the walkthrough area is going to be because we are going to have lots of animals in there as well uh, as I said in the previous episodes we are going to insert the flying foxes in here which is going to be the walkthrough exhibit then we are going to have the koalas in there and the red-necked wallabies for the walkthrough habitat. And not enough, both of these exhibit and habitat are inside this building and the habitat animals will be able to go outside as well. Um, it's going to be uh, somewhat like for the habitat for the kiwis because the animals in here, the wallabies and the koalas, will be able to walk underneath the visitor's path into their outdoor habitat. And in theory, the koalas would also be able to walk over the path that is on the upper side of the building through a little window that you are going to see in a minute. Here you can see it right on the left side. The little window is for the koalas to walk through that and over the heads of our visitors. In theory, because uh, yeah, it doesn't work because I think the problem with it is that the animals are too close to the viewers path so that the traversable area is not possible for the animals to walk over the heads of our visitors so unfortunately it's just more decoration than actually practical for the animals but yeah it looks kind of cool and so I said okay let's keep it and the koalas are still able to get out there they are walking on the ground through the tunnel that I built here already so they can walk outdoors. Yeah, so that's the first thing. You can actually see I continued with the brick wall out uh, on the outside and uh, also put the fence on top of it. Uh, in a later stage or in a few minutes we are going to build some uh, planting over there uh, filling the gaps with the mulch pieces and have some plants in there to make it look a little bit nicer and to finish the upper part of the building as well yeah and I really do like this building I said it in the last episode and I think in the episode before as well because it 
yeah it connects so many different things in here like this walkthrough habitat you have an underwater viewing area for the platypus um, you have the indoor areas for the kiwi and for um, for the wombats and uh, you have a lower part of the building you can go upstairs and leave the building on the upper part or enter the building on the upper part and um, walk out of the building and enter the building on the upper part on a different side into the walkthrough habitat and yeah I just I just like it because it is simple no it's not simple it's uh, it's a small building it's I think it is way smaller than uh, Brooksburg Castle uh, but it has so much more to give inside and yeah that's why I really 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 love this building and that's why I also can't wait to start a new series um, let's build a house which is uh, yeah I can't wait for that because I have so many ideas on building realistic houses and um, yeah exciting houses as well like this one um, what I'm going to do is uh, I thought it was a great idea to copy the sunshade from the side where uh, the kiwis are to the other side for uh, the walkthrough habitat um, yeah but I was not too happy with it um, and I also would have had the problem with the roof of this um, uh, sunshade that you can actually see it would be too low to the part where our koalas would leave the building well in hindsight um, I could have done it like this because as I told you before the koalas are not able to walk out there so um, it wouldn't have been a problem with uh, the uh, with the sunshade on top of it as well but yeah, here we are. Uh, and it, as you can see, we don't have that much space on top of it uh, to make it happen that, that we actually could put the climbing frame a little bit higher so that the koalas would be able to walk through there. So I think there is no chance to make this work. So. Yeah, sorry for that, but maybe in a future build we're going to build something similar and um, I will have that in mind to make it happen in a future build. Yeah, and I really do like uh, that you have this uh, vista points. Um, should I call it vista points? So, yeah, this viewing points for the habitat so you can walk through on the um, on the lower side of the building uh, or you can also if you're afraid of bats or in this case of the flying foxes if you're afraid of them you don't have to walk through the habitat you can also choose to not go in there and leave the building on top of it and have a look at the animals um, from inside of the building um, close to the kiwis or you can even go outside on the terrace and have a look at the animals uh, from the outside as well and you can also enjoy uh, the wallabies and the koalas um, from the outside um, yeah what you actually saw was uh, that I tried to build something like a tree trunk um, out of these climbing uh, tree trunks for the animals um, uh, connecting more of them together making it a little bit of a thicker tree trunk um, it looked awkward and I I thought it would be a problem for the animals as well because I, I feared there was lots of glitching going on if I do that and so I decided we're going with the fake rock tree which is also climb uh, climbable for the animals and uh, so I decided to go with that. Yeah, 
Yeah, and as I said before, here I was uh, covering the path uh, on the sides with. Uh, yeah, you always have the problem with this uh, with these elevated paths that you have this uh, little uh, overstanding wood pieces or uh, concrete pieces on the sides of it, uh, which looks pretty awkward and I don't like that at all so I decided to put those uh, fake rocks in there color them in a dark gray almost black and uh, put the mulch pieces in there uh, between the fence and those rock pieces and give it a little bit more of a natural look and a little bit of a more um, yeah just an older word Give it a nicer look, let's say it like that. On the realistic side, we might have some problems with that habitat. Because as we enter the building through uh, the doors on, um, yeah, on the side of the walkthrough habitat, there is no second door or second fencing like these curtain, uh, these plastic curtains that we have on the other side. So uh, in theory, the animals could escape through that door um, if we op uh, if we're opening it. Uh, so the koalas could walk out, uh, the wallabies could run out, uh, the foxes could fly out, and we also would have a problem on the side with uh, the plastic curtains because uh, these plastic curtains won't stop the koalas or the wallabies from walking out there. So yeah, on that part it is not that realistic. But yeah, as I said in the beginning as we started this zoo I wanted it to be realistic, semi-realistic and not too realistic. So I think I can live with that and I hope you guys can live with that as well. Yeah, for the indoor habitat I chose these, uh, yeah, this path and I also used those tree trunks, uh, the small ones, to cover it a little bit up or to, um, yeah, to mark where the actual path is. To prevent our visitors from walking into the actual habitat to the animals. I was thinking about um, some kind of a fencing right in between, but the problem would have been that the animals would actually not be able to walk from the left side to the right side and that is something that I didn't want to have. I could have prevented it for the koalas if I gave them something they could climb over the path, but I would have had the problem with uh, the wallabies because they wouldn't have been able to walk from the left side to the right side of it and uh, that is something that I definitely didn't want to have. Um, the next problem in here would have been the stairs because, uh, yeah, koalas as well as the wallabies would have been able to walk over there and also now that I think about it oh my god this is so unrealistic now <laughs> I should not talk about it even um, yeah the part where the koalas in theory <laughs> could walk through the window um, the flying foxes could fly out there as well but yeah as I said I still love it I still love it, it's not that realistic, but it looks nice and if you don't think about all of these things, uh, it actually would work. Yeah? <laughs> so I hope you guys don't mind that and you still enjoy the building. Yeah, we are almost halfway through, so the next thing is to decorate the indoor. Um, I already bought the flying foxes because I wanted to see what we have for them um, in case of enrichment items and stuff like that and how we could cover these up. Because yeah, I do like these walkthrough exhibits. A little bit <laughs> yeah I'm not uh, yeah I'm not the biggest fan of them but 
Yeah, they're kinda cool. They are way better than the actual exhibits, so um, I give them that. Um, yeah, but what I really don't like is all these pieces for the animals that we do have in here um, with those huge and massive, not no, not massive, but huge metal beams. They look so awkward and if you want to do a natural habitat in there, it's, uh, yeah, it's quite difficult. So I would love if Francia would give us something like an option where we could choose if we want those metal pieces in the habitats or if we want wooden ones or more themed ones or whatever because yeah um, I haven't found a way or I have not found an idea how to cover those things up and um, yeah, this might also be uh, be the case because I'm not working that often with those uh, things, and so um, yeah. In fact, this is, I think, the second time, the second or third time. No, it's the second time actually that I'm using those walkthrough habitats. I did it once in a Swamp Lake Zoo for the reptile house where I had the fruit bats in there and uh, as well the butterflies. But uh, after that I never built a walkthrough exhibit ever again, so um, yeah. Maybe that's also the reason why I don't have that many ideas how to cover the things up. But if you have any ideas or any guesses, just uh, let me know in the comment section and I would be happy to do something about that and uh, cover those things up a little bit more. Yeah, just a little unspectacular climbing frame for the koalas outdoors. I also gave them uh, these platforms with those fake trees. Uh, yeah, because uh, actually they should have been able to walk up there and uh, go through the window, but uh, yeah, as I said before, many times this is not happening. Yeah, decorating the outdoors, coloring the terrain, which is very important to give it a nice look. So if you just leave it with the short grass, it looks so, so boring and you can give the whole habitat so much structure if you're just covering it a little bit with, uh, with the soil color, uh, with the rock color, give it a little bit of sand and then put rocks in there and after that do the planting and the whole habitat looks so much more natural and so much more nice. Oh, and by the way, as I told you guys in the last episode that our platypus are the unhappiest animals that we have in Brooksburg Zoo, um, I can guarantee you that the flying foxes, the koalas and the wallabies are very, very, very happy with their habitat. So size-wise and all the other stuff, uh, animal enrichment items, plants and uh, whatever is going on, they are very happy with it. So they are at, I think, 97 and 98% or something like that. So you don't have to worry about these animals. Um, yeah, it's, it's just the unhappy platypus in here, but all the other animals are so, so, so happy with what we built for them in here. Yeah, once again, my favorite part in the whole Planet Zoo game is rock work and planting and making habitats look nice. I really, really, really love that. Especially with the new plants, I say it all the time, with the new plants from the Oceania DLC. Uh, this, uh, this plant with the Latin name that I can't even pronounce, uh, not in German and not in English as well, but uh, I really love that. It gives the whole terrain such a nice texture and makes it so 
unique and uh, give it yeah almost a woodland feeling a tropical feeling and I really like that yeah, and I would love to put these ferns in more often but they are so huge I really do love them but yeah even in this big area here it is quite impossible to put in those huge ferns uh, because they take so much space and yeah that will cost a lot of the traversable uh, area for the animals so I didn't want to put uh, too much of them in here. And I also do love these fern trees. They are so beautiful. Yeah, and finally we are at the last part. Uh, this whole part here, building the roof for the building, building the glass roof because a little bit of roof is already done, building the glass roof for the building took me about two and a half hours it was so difficult to build that because I had a picture in my mind what I wanted to achieve like I most of the times do have and um, yeah most of the time it works in a way um, it worked this time as well but it was so exhausting and I often do have to uh, do have the thing um, when something takes too long and it's so exhausting um, I almost could cry at the end of it because I just can't anymore and that was the case with that roof as well um, yeah it was just exhausting as I said um, because I was once again building with the copy and circle around mode. Um, I do that very often and you also know me, I'm doing the advanced stuff, not the beginner stuff. Um, which sounds a little bit... Uh, yeah, not so nice, but uh, you know what I mean. Um, advanced stuff is not building in uh, building it in one piece but doing it many many times uh, with different shapes and forms and whatever and I did that in here as well and um, with the round shape that I wanted to achieve I had to choose such a big circle that it was so difficult to rotate the stuff all around because uh, the <coughs> Sorry, because uh, the button for the rotation was so far away in the center that I couldn't almost see what I was doing. So uh, yeah, was not that easy. <coughs> Sorry guys. Um, yeah, so I cut a lot of those parts out just to show you what pieces I used and how, uh, how I managed to do this all. I left uh, those single parts in here. So first of all I used um, to build the frame around it so that I know where to put the stuff and then I used those wooden planks, colored them in a darkish brown and um, uh, put those metal beams on top of it and on top of that another glass piece because as I said in the beginning or in the last episode I wanted to keep the building very bright and not too dark this was my greatest fear that we have a very dark building inside and I didn't want to have that so yeah glass pieces then covering it uh, up a little bit with those wooden pieces um, colored them again in a darkish brown and then rotated it around In a later stage I'm just connecting three or four or five pieces of them and uh, copying those around this is uh, a little bit faster and I noticed that sometimes this rotation mode is very very weird because the next thing uh, that I was doing is um, building the glass pieces for the roof 
and I uh, copied and circled them around in uh, three parts so that we don't have that much overlapping going on so that it looks a little bit weird. Um, first part worked out fine, second part worked out fine, third part same building pieces, same amount of pieces didn't work out and I just don't know why. It just was off the grid all the time. I tried it four or five or six times and all the time was the same and I just, yeah, I just don't know why. Didn't make any sense to me. Yeah, here you might say, okay, you have two pieces right now, you have two pieces in the next part and you have one piece going on in the part after that. Um, I did it a little bit uh, bigger, so I used two pieces for the third part as well. So that is the thing that I just didn't understand. Yeah, so I cut that out. Here you can see we have six of those glass pieces right now because I felt if I'd only use um, five pieces it's going to be a little bit too dark for our walkthrough habitat and so I decided we're going with six pieces and then having those wooden pieces um, on the outside again here you can see I'm connecting those and copying those around makes it so much faster And here you can already see how beautiful it looks in the inside. And copying those window pieces around, using them on the other side as well. Yeah, the shape of the building was a little bit of a problem because the roof has a different shape than the actual building has. So I had to um, come up with an idea how to make it work, especially on the side for the walkthrough habitat. So I had to, um, yeah, I had to be a little bit creative about that. So now it's time to close up this side using those wooden pieces. I think they were from the aquatic DLC once again. Yeah, just like that. And here we are. Just deleting those pieces that are too much and also trying to do that on the other side. So I was using the same pieces, just uh, having a different angle. Um, which was a little bit... no, it was not actually a problem, but um, yeah. Uh, the thing is, if you are on a different angle, you have to delete lots of stuff. And if you are not on the same grid as those glass pieces, uh, it makes it a little bit difficult. So I had to come up with an idea and I decided we are going for these wooden pieces um, with an overlapping roof on top of it. Yeah, trying to find the perfect uh, angle to hit uh, the, the end of uh, one window so that we don't have a problem with the connection there. Yeah, 
and then using those metal beams. To point out the yeah the point where we are going to delete or where we have to delete the rest of the pieces. And here's the part uh, that I was talking about. So using those wooden pieces once again to build something like an overlapping roof here um, as well as on the other side so that we actually could um, yeah, delete all the uh, parts that we didn't need and uh, yeah, still having it not looking awkward. So, with that being said, we are already at the end of the video. We finished the Paradise Beyond and we finished our Oceania house. Um, there's going to be a few little changes and uh, some things to be done uh, off screen. I'm going to show you guys in a little tour afterwards. But uh, for this time, yeah, everything is done. So if you enjoyed this video, just leave a like and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any further episodes. Next week we are going to continue building in Brooksburg Castle and having the habitat for the white rhinos, so you don't want to miss that. Um, I'm going to leave you alone with the animals in here and a short tour through our house. I hope you guys tune in next week as well. Take care of yourself and bye!